In this video, I'm going to show you how to create your own Gantt chart using the default matrix visual in Power BI. We're going to go through it step by step together so you can follow along as well. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fanan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So let's jump right into it. Here I have a empty report with two tables in my data set. If you look here, we have the calendar table, which is what we use for our time intelligence calculations. And here we have a project table, which just has some information about the projects itself. So the type of tasks that you have uh, for each of those, uh, which project that they belong to, their start dates and finish dates, as well as their status. So if they're completed, if they're late, if they're in progress or not started. So we have all the data that we need in order to create a Gantt chart visual. And if you don't know yet, Gantt chart is just an easier way for you to visualize your uh, projects and tasks within a certain time frame. Uh, you can use custom visuals. You can import them into your uh, Power BI desktop. But in this video, we're going to show you how you can use the default matrix visual and convert it into a Gantt chart that you can use for your reports. So the first thing that we'll do um, is we'll head on to the model itself. So we have the calendar and the project tables um, not related at the moment. We need to create a relationship with them before we can start working on them on measures. So to do that, we'll just drag uh, the date to the start date here. So we have a relationship between these two columns. The next thing that we do is we head over to our report view and let's start visualizing the project information on a matrix. So I uh, will start by selecting the project, the task, start date, finish date, and status. Here we go. We're going to convert this into a matrix and we're going to just uh, make sure this is set up correctly. Uh, you'll see it's sort of minimized. So we need to collapse that or expand it to the very bottom. Once that's done, let's just fix this a little bit. Uh, so under column headers, well, not column headers. So under row headers, we need to disable the stepped layout so that we can have all of these columns uh, side by side and also I want to hide the plus minus icons just to make it a little bit cleaner. So these are the columns that we need for our matrix and for our column we need to show the dates. So we're going to just put the date from the calendar at the moment which uh, need to, we need to fix this a little bit because the views are a bit too wide but these uh, columns will be where the Gantt chart will be. Uh, so a couple of things to fix. So first, we need to fix the view for the dates. Uh, we need to reformat that into something that is a little bit smaller. Uh, to do that, we're just going to click the dates. And under format, on the ribbon up there, we will just do format month slash date. So that is the view format for these uh, columns. So here it shows you the various start dates uh, for our project. Don't worry because when we add the measure, it will fix itself. But for now, these are just the start dates corresponding to what we have in our projects table. Because if you remember, we have a relationship between the dates and the start date. The next thing is the highlights because we want to dynamically highlight it using conditional formatting. We want to just make sure that this has no formatting whatsoever. So we'll just go to the format here under style, change the default uh, to none. So you'll see that there's no more alternating uh, highlights on each of those uh, rows. So the next thing is we need to do two things. So first we need to create the measure to highlight the dates within each task. So for example, we have this first task here, the side APM process. We want uh, the range from the 1st of November to 8th of November to be highlighted. Uh, similarly for this one as well, 1st to the 6th, vice versa, vice versa. So we need to create a measure 
so that we can put it on the values in our table or in our matrix to highlight those uh, cells. So let's do that. I'm not going to create a calculations uh, measure table. We're just going to put it in the projects table to keep it simple. We're going to name this one um, column values. So first, let's create a variable. So the first variable that we need to create is the start date. So this is the start date for the calculation that we'll need to write for the period. So we're going to type calculate here. And here we're going to say, give me the lowest value in my project date. And then we're going to use all to say, um, ignore any filter context applied to the um, to the projects table. So what that will give us is the range of the columns that will be visible in our matrix. So we'll do the same thing for the end date. So we'll do the opposite. So here we're going to do end date. And then instead of min, we're going to do max. So that will give us the opposite part. And then this one, we need to make sure we are pointing on the finish date. So let me just do this. Finish date. Here we go. So now that we've done that, we'll now create the variable period, which is what will determine uh, the start date and the end date for each of the tasks. So we're going to write here minimum for the calendar date. So in the range that we have there is it has to be uh, greater than or equal to start date and Uh, we're gonna do calendar date again. I'm gonna say if the uh, highest calendar date is less than or equals to the end date. So now that we have that, we simply just return this value. So now we have the value to say this if this is within a period, or uh, what do we do? So we're gonna add an if statement here to say if period is true, then give me a one, All right? So we'll keep it like that for now and let's add this into our values well. Uh, so here we kind of have to fix a couple of things. So we have a couple of subtotals that I don't want to see. So we'll just disable those. So here we go. So you'll see that now we are using that period to mark the dates where uh, the start date and finish dates are for each of those tasks. So for example, if you look at this one, you see the 1st of November to the 8th of November. Uh, that is where the ones are. And then where there aren't any ones, it's blank because we decide that on the if statement. So same thing with this other one. So 1st to the 6th, that's what is being highlighted or you have the one value on those columns. The next thing that we want to do now is we want to determine what the color should be for each of those tasks. Now we're using numbers at the moment because we're going to convert them into uh, colors later. Uh, but for now, we need to distinguish which tasks are late or completed, not started or in progress, uh, depending on the status of those tasks. And we want to highlight them accordingly. So for example, if it's complete, we want to show them as green or if they're late, we want to show them as red. So something like this. So to do that, we need to distinguish the values all together. So uh, we have one, two, three, four different statuses, and we need to distinguish between those four different statuses. So we'll do that in the measure itself. So we're going to go back to our measure here, column values. We're going to add a new variable called status. And this variable is what we will use to determine the status for each of those tasks. So we're going to say, give me the maximum status, which is just the, um, uh, the unique status for each of those tasks. And then we're going to do another all. So give me without any filter context for the calendar. And then on the return, we're going to change this into a switch statement because we will now have more values to check. 
So expression will need it uh, put it as true. And then here's where we will put our uh, expressions. So let's say if the period, if you're within the period, and if your status is completed, give me one. So this is what decides what the status should be. So if the status is completed, it has to be one. Uh, and then we'll need to put uh, different values for the different statuses. So to make it easier, we're just gonna copy and paste. We'll say uh, if the uh, status is late, we wanna make it two. If the status is in progress, we'll make it three. And then lastly, if it is not started, we'll make it four. Let's see if that works. So here we go. So now if I just deselect that for a second, so you will see now that if it's late, for example, this task is late, you will see that the number on our value is two. If it's completed, it's one. If it's not started, it's four. And if it is in progress, it is three. So very simple, right? So now that we've marked where the periods are for each of the tasks and what their status are, now we move on to the cool stuff, which is the conditional formatting, right? So to do that, we're gonna go to the format pane over here. We go to conditional formatting and we're gonna first just try to change the background color. So if we hit advanced here, we're gonna define the color based on certain rules. So we'll say, uh, we're gonna create four, and this corresponds to the numbers that we've put in there. So if we want is, is value, so if it's completed, late, in progress, and uh, I don't remember what this one is, four is not started. So one is completed, so it should be green. So we'll just pick a random green color here, it doesn't matter. Uh, for two, it should be late, so it's red. In progress, uh, we can mark it as blue. And then not started, we will just mark it as gray for now. So if we hit OK, oh, so it didn't. So actually I made a mistake there. So if we hit advanced controls again, uh, I need to change these as numbers, not percents. If we hit okay once more, so there you go. So it's now marked those uh, specific tasks within our Gantt chart. Um, we just need to kind of hide the numbers. And to do that, we will just need to do the same thing, but on the font colors, just so that they blend in the same way. So advanced controls, once again, we use rules. We do uh, four different rules here. We just do is, we do one, two, three, four. We'll do numbers and the colors, green, red, blue, and gray. And there you go. So you now have a Gantt chart that marks out the specific tasks within uh, dates and even shows you or color codes to you what the statuses are for each of those tasks. So for this example, we're just showing November. So you see it doesn't go that far, um, but if you have a lot of dates and you might want to use a sort of date slicer for that, you can use something like this. So you can get the date here put it in a slicer. So you have the slider visual here. And then you just need to make sure that the column values are set to is not blank. And there you go. So if you want to change the range of your Gantt charts, this will cross filter. So you'll see that it will show you from the 7th of November onwards. And the same way that you would use with the other visuals. And that's really it for this video. I hope I've helped you understand how easy it is to implement something like a Gantt chart using the default visuals in Power BI. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. 
Give it a dislike if you didn't so I know to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files, and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye-bye.